So if you've got anything similar to this at home, a round fruit bowl would be ideal. You can create a design like I'm doing today. Good afternoon and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Sharon. Welcome to my YouTube channel where you'll find lots of videos about basic floral design as well as things that are a bit more intricate and a bit more advanced. Today I'm going to create a design in this low wooden bowl. If I just hold that up for you to see. So if you've got anything similar to this at home, a round fruit bowl would be ideal. Now my mechanics for this design is what we would call a posy pad. So this is a floral foam posy pad. They're often used for funeral work. Something that's not generally seen in the flower arranging world, but it's something a commercial florist would use to make a funeral design. You might do a table arrangement on it at Christmas. It's got a plastic base to it, so it's waterproof. And I'm using it to sit inside this larger round bowl. I don't know if you can see it on camera, uh, but I've just stuck a small amount of floral fix. So this is like the plasticine. And the only reason I've done that is so that when I'm demonstrating to you, I can angle the bowl forward without my floral foam slipping forward. So because I can give you a better view of it angled forward like this, I've raised the wooden bowl up on a plastic dish. It's only so it makes it clearer for you to see on the screen. There's no need for you to put that sticky floral fix there to hold your foam into place. And that's my mechanics to start with. Now this design is going to be grouped and textured. And what that suggests is I've got material that has lots of texture and I have flowers and foliages that I'm going to group together. So instead of spreading them around the arrangement in a very traditional way, so I'm going to group the same flowers and the same foliage together and it creates a more dramatic design, something that's maybe a little bit more modern. If you wanted to, you could incorporate some candles in the center. And this time of year, I know I keep saying it, it's the autumn here in the UK, but you could put some apples, some berries, or some rose hips, or small materials that might be dropping from the tree at this time of the year. Okay, so let's get started. My first foliage is going to be the, just the cordyline leaves, and they are quite tall and spiky, so they don't really suit this style of arrangement. So what I'm going to do here, and you'll see me do this with lots of the cordyline, I'm going to roll them so I get this more rounded shape. And I'm going to start by putting a few of those around the outside of my arrangement. But what I'm not going to do is that really traditional placement and place them equally spaced out in the arrangement. I'm going to group them together in one position. And as I work my way round through the arrangement, I'm going to repeat that pattern in another place. I don't have to do it with three leaves. I can do it with one leaf on its own or I can put two leaves together. We're not following any of those rigid British sort of flower arranging rules. This is following more European design proportions. Now I'm going to do like a mounded effect there in the middle and I am working backwards. So I'm facing the design towards the camera. So if I feel at the end anything needs adjusting before I photograph it, I shall do that. But I'm rolling them so we get that shape that's much better for this type of design. It's low down, it's keeping your eye contained within the round shape of my container. It's not creating a line which makes your eye travel outside the floral design. I'm just going to swap that one round because I've got two straight pieces facing forward. So I'm just going to angle that slightly. Now as we add more flowers and we support the foliage, I'll be able to hold these stems up towards what will eventually be the ceiling rather than them draping down over the sides of the container. Now I've got some Aspidistra and I'm going to do the same with the Aspidistra but this time I'm going to staple them so we get that neater 
rounder, more compact shape. Again, it's not drawing my eye to the edge of the container. It's keeping it contained within the overall shape and I'm creating lots of pockets of interest within the design rather than that focal line or that rhythmic line that we sometimes have in flower arranging. Now this would be great as a table centre. It's often used as a funeral tribute as well where you group all the materials together. It's quite a modern design and you can even use it with just foliage and find yourself lots of different foliages from the garden. You could put moss in there, vegetables, fruits, seed heads. You might be drying lots of material at this time of the year and that would be wonderful in here as well. But the emphasis on this design is round shapes. So we're going to avoid any of those lines or any of those linear material like gladioli or delphiniums. We're going to look for round shapes, carnations, roses, in my case, it's going to be pincushion protea and some celosia. But the emphasis for this arrangement is definitely on the contrast of the textures. So it's how they work alongside one another. So we're going to look for materials that have different colours, different shapes and different visual textures. So things that are really going to pop alongside one another. So as I work my way through the aspidistra leaves and I'm trying not to create a very regimented pattern. I can talk you through a little bit about the channel. You'll find a whole host of videos and what I like to do is hear from you all. I like to know where you're from, what part of the world or the country you're watching from and what is your favourite type of floral design? What, which of the videos have you preferred? What would you like to see more of? Do you like the more contemporary designs or do you like things that are more traditional? Are the videos using supermarket flowers helpful to you or do you enjoy these ones where I show you more unusual flowers that we've bought from the florist auction? So we're currently almost finished on our first online 10 week course and we're going to have another one starting after Christmas. So if you want to know any information about the online course then email me on the address below so it's sharondower at hotmail.com and I've also introduced super thanks to the channel. So if you feel like you want to support the channel more, you can contribute using the super thanks below. And that helps me with the admin and the editing and, and all those important backstage skills that are needed to manage a YouTube channel. Right, okay, so hopefully you can see a fairly good round shape. I'm trying to repeat the shape of my container. I'm just going to put one more on this side here. I'm not overfilling it at this stage because I've got lots of flowers to go into the design and I'm going to almost fill in every gap with some interesting material. I'm going to start with the protea and I've only got two of the protea and in sort of European floral design using twos is perfectly acceptable. And what I'm going to do with my two protea is group them very close together. Now these are the pincushion protea and if you don't have the same as me, think about using maybe a carnation, it could be a large apple, it could be a vegetable, but I'm going to group them alongside one another so you get that real emphasis on the texture and the colour of that particular flower. It's quite a spiky flower and it's quite tactile. So now what I'm going to do is look to put alongside it something that's very different in its shape and colour. I'm going to have to turn it round so I can concentrate a little bit more on what I'm doing. So this is a very pretty little pink rose. This is a florist rose called Aqua but you can get a selection of supermarket roses that will do exactly the same effect. You could use a large open lily. And what I've tried to do there is put them in at different heights so we don't get that very flat design. We get lots of up and down movement and we get some interest within the flowers itself. Then I'm gonna work over to the opposite sort of section, the opposite sort of corner. And I don't want to repeat the pattern exactly. So this time I'm going to place two of the roses together. 
The idea is that we end up with a lovely dome shape to the design and to balance off the colour a little bit I'm going to bring some of the bright sort of pink colour over to this section. I'm not worried about copying the other placements, it's all about bringing that strong colour right the way throughout my arrangement. Right, now I have a flower that I'm not sure if I've used before, but this is Celosia. This is the Coxcomb Celosia, commonly known as brains in the florist industry, although I wish my brain was as pretty as that. And this is the same sort of colour as the Pincushion Protea, and it's got some lovely cerise colour in it as well. So it's going to pick up all the textures and the colours of the flowers that I've already placed in. And I'm going to aim to have them sitting alongside one another so that that really wavy shape almost sort of knitted in alongside one another like a jigsaw. Now I only have two of the Protea, uh, sorry the Celosia. If I had more I might want to bring one down here but for the minute that suits me fine. I'm not worried about them, the design being symmetrical on either side. I don't need to worry about balancing it off. Now I have the gold strike. This is Leucodendron gold strike and this is good because I can use it in two parts. I can use the top section, just cut that, I can use the top section so I get the rosette head and that can cluster together nicely on the edge and now I've got a lovely textural contrast between the protea here and the flat leaves that are around it so we've got lots and lots of interest and now hopefully you can see why this is called a textured and a group design because the emphasis is really on all those interesting textures almost like a mosaic or a piece of tapestry really quite beautiful this is one of my favorite ways although I think I say that in every video so with the bottom section of the stem as long as you can't see that ugly cut on the top of the stem I'm just going to cut it down a little bit lower as long as you can't see that ugly top section we can also use the bottom part of the stem so really you're getting real value for money from that one stem you get in two placements and I've worked my way round to a different section within the foam to introduce some more of that texture there isn't that lovely I absolutely love this style of arranging now then more of this texture I think we're going to come over this side you've really got to be quite choosy with your choice of material for this arrangement it's no good having sprays of flowers like chrysanthemums or spray carnations you have to have big round flowers hydrangeas are marvelous dahlias would be brilliant you could use chrysanthemum blooms at this time of year sunflowers are great as well and you need to have that real emphasis on color whether it's a striking color combination like this or contrasting colors or whether you have things that all blend in together there really has to be that textural contrast it's also quite good because if you don't have a huge amount of flowers but you have lots of single heads so sometimes when you make a floral design and you've bought a supermarket bench you get left with one of this and one of that and with the addition of some foliage you can create another design with the extra flowers or the spare flowers that you've got left over. Right though this is a garden hydrangea but the colour worked really well and hopefully you can see that everything is on a different level and that gives the design far more interest than it being really really flat. I'm just going to tilt it forward a bit more so you can see how those colours are coming together. Now with this type of design you really need to look at the flowers. If we think about the protea, from a distance it looks like it's orange but if you have a close-up look at it there is a really vibrant pink in it which is why I introduced the brighter rose. Right now you've seen me use the lotus seed pods before. These have been wired so that I can use them in the design 
and I'm going to put a little group here on the side. That's going to give me a real difference there between that pretty delicate soft rose. I've now got something quite harsh alongside it. And if I do the same with one over here, I'm distributing the colour and that texture just find a big enough gap for that to go in. And when you think about those principles and elements of design, one of them is repetition, rhythm and repetition. So I've repeated patterns and the colour is very similar to the dark red of my quarter line. So I have a link between this section and this section. I have a cerise colour edge to my quarter line. So that's picking up and repeating the colour of my roses. And if you look through the design, there is something that will link and make your eye rhythmically move throughout the arrangement. So it's not as obvious as that focal line that we've looked at many times, but we still get movement throughout the arrangement. Now I had a couple of the heuchera leaves left which went in a, a previous design and again I've chosen them for the fabulous colour and I feel that we've got a little bit of a gap here. So these are going to work in a cluster in this position here and I'm going to put all three of them in here. If I had more I might connect it to another section of the design but I'm quite happy with those. And if we look at this section here I've got a really neat finish. There's no floral foam visible and you can still appreciate my wood container because I haven't draped any material over the side. Now my final flower is going to be a, a bright orange flower called Leonotis and if you haven't seen it before in a previous video then it's coming very soon but it's this very unusual shaped foliage, uh, flower rather. If you've got Flomus in the garden it's very much like a Flomus. It's a great example of line as we use it as it is here but what I'm going to do is cut it down into smaller segments like this so now I get that textural interest and because it's a smaller flower, I can use it now to fill in any little gaps and add a real zesty orange to the design alongside that pink rose. Only a few little spaces left now and we're almost done. So if you want to join me on Facebook, I have a private Facebook group called Sharon's Innovations Group. You'll find us on Facebook. Don't look for me personally because I won't respond to your request. But on there you can share some photos, you can connect with people in your own area or your own country and you can see what types of designs are popular and what are being created by like-minded people. Now this is my last orange Leonotis but what I'm feeling at the moment is that this area here doesn't have enough colour and enough flower. So I need to step back, reevaluate, and think about what extra flower I need to get to fill in that section there. So after a little bit of deliberation, I think my ideal flower would have been uh, some more of the hydrangea, but I don't have any of the hydrangea. But what I do have is a dried sunflower or a, a sunflower that I'm in the process of drying off. And I'm thinking that the darker centre is going to pick up really nicely on my leaves and the lotus heads there in the middle. So I've got two. I'm thinking that they're going to be too heavy alongside, too visually heavy together. They're going to look like those headlights that I refer to all the time. And because the stem is curved, I'm going to remove it and I'm going to place it on a, a large kebab stick and then I'll be able to insert that head in straight rather than at an angle. So I'm going to pop one sunflower in in this section here. The, the green of the sepals around the outside now pick up on the green of my leucodendron and now I'm going to bring one somewhere over in this section here. I'm just going to play around and see where I think it's going to go. My first choice, and I think this is going to be my final place, is in this section here. So I, I slightly have to move those lotus heads. I don't want to put it here because it's going to be opposite and it's going to make it a really symmetrical design. 
and there's a lot going on in this section here so I feel adding this one is going to make this section far too busy. So what I will do is I will move the protea slightly, oh it's not a protea, I'll move the lotus head slightly and then I can get my last sunflower in that position there and just move those couple of roses because I've nudged them out of place with my stem and I think we're done. So if you're drying flowers at the moment at home and you're picking stuff to use during the winter this would be an ideal time to use it. You don't need the length of the stem so if you've got flowers that are left over from other designs then it'll work really well. If you've made a tall design and you want to swap it around this is an ideal way of creating it. And if you don't want to use the floral foam like I've done here, you can use a double layer of the wire netting, the chicken wire, just layered on the base because that will help support and hold your flowers. So thanks for watching. I hope that's really inspired you. Think about all those autumn textures that you could use. Have a look in the supermarkets for those autumn gourds and enjoy what you're doing. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and hit that notification bell if you want to be told every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.